Well, I think we feel super lucky uh, to be close friends with Warren. Uh, we've gotten to do lots of fun things with Warren. Uh, we've learned a lot from Warren. Uh, we were with Warren uh, when his, uh, after his first wife passed away and uh, I supported him there. A good friend of his, Kay Graham, uh, passed away uh, when uh, she was in Sun Valley. So there's been some ups and downs, but mostly it's been great trips. We've gotten Warren to travel places that he's never been before. Uh, and uh, he and I talk all the time about how the world's going, you know, what businesses are doing well, uh, what things we're surprised about. Uh, so he's, he's an amazing friend. And a little bit of bridge thrown in there too, right? Bridge, some bridge and golf is an <laughs> and ex golf excuse to, to hang out. Uh, we play quite a bit of bridge. I go to Omaha uh, once a year and we do bridge. He comes here and we do bridge and then uh, a bit of bridge online. He plays a lot of online bridge, even, even without me. Well, my mom was having an event uh, and I was very busy on Microsoft work, but she convinced me to come meet uh, Kay Graham and Warren Buffett. So the two of us flew out there somewhat reluctantly because, you know, buying and selling stocks, which is how I thought of Warren, uh, wasn't a particular interest to me and didn't seem like value added or, you know, it, that it related to the way I thought of the world. It turned out that was completely wrong. Warren's understanding of business values because he has this very deep uh, thinking about uh, how things change. And so he quickly asked me great questions. He was explaining things to me. And uh, we knew that day that we'd be very close friends. Uh, in fact, we just couldn't get enough of each other. Uh, that was July 5th, 1991. One other sweet thing about this story is that, um, so I was at a couple of the family dinners at the Gates house where Mary, Bill's mom, was trying to convince him to come out to the family place at Hood Canal uh, to meet Kay Graham and Warren Buffett. And he was resisting because, as he said, he was really busy with Microsoft. And uh, finally she said, you know, you know, please come. And he said, Mom, okay, I'll come for lunch. And so it was a really busy day for him, and we got a helicopter, which was very unusual back then, and flew out to the family place at Hood Canal. And Bill said, okay, Mom, I'm going to stay for lunch, and then that's it. I really have to go back and work. And the helicopter sat out there, and it stayed, and mm -hmm. it stayed, and it stayed. We mm -hmm. stayed at Hood Canal for hours because um, Warren and Bill just really hit it off on that first day. And... The other thing that was neat was about three or four years later, I was somewhere with Kay Graham alone, and she said to me, you know, Melinda, Warren didn't need any new friends in his life. He's, you know, he's, he's got a lot of friends, as we had by then learned, amazing friends. Uh, but she said, you know, there was just something really special between his friendship with Bill, and he really cherishes it, and I knew Bill felt the same way. Well, well Warren, from a very early age, thought about stocks and why some went up and some went down. He just got fascinated with it. And for his entire life, making predictions, seeing where he was right and wrong, adjusting his model, uh, he's been pretty obsessed with it. And it's meant now he understands business uh, like no one else. And in my case, it was software. And, you know, most people don't focus on one thing. And so if day and night you're kind of looking at it, uh, examining your mistakes, you just get a bit ahead. And, you know, who knows why Warren was so able to focus on what he was, but it's a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, he can explain things to people. He's very humble about it, uh, but he's an expert in the truest sense of the word. And I think one of the important things that he told us about the foundation very early on was that to pick what we wanted to focus on. And once we picked the bullseye of our target, the other places pieces would drop away and it would be okay. And because we were initially, before we'd picked our focus, we were getting lots and lots of letters from lots of worthy causes, things that really tugged at your heart and your head. And I think once he helped us see that, it was really beneficial to us. And we really ha did pick an initial early focus and have stuck to it. And the other thing I'll say that he was just incredibly kind to me about in the early years after we started, we got married and started to have children, was he could see I was struggling between work, which I love, the foundation, and the kids. And he said, 
don't worry, Melinda. You know, you're doing the right thing as a parent, and you've got enough time to do what you're doing at the foundation, too. And he was just, he's just very kind in that way. Well, Warren's very uh, careful about his time. He keeps most of it free. And that's amazing that, you know, lots of people would love to have him come give speeches and visit, um, but he he only does what what he thinks is necessary, and that's that's a great lesson. I mean, it's so many we've learned so many lessons from Warren because he he's a he with his success he still makes himself available mm. to his friends and he has time to constantly learn and not feel like he's behind or are overscheduled and and that's pretty unique. Sometimes when he'd be at our house and we'd be finishing up after a couple of days and Bill would say something to him kind of on the way out the door and we saying goodbye about, well, you know, maybe we can get together, you know, a couple of months from now. And Warren would pull out of his breast pocket his little calendar and he, he'd look, he'd go, well, that day is quite free. And Bill would always say after Warren left, because Bill was in the throes of running Microsoft, oh, I want my calendar to be like that someday. But I think it also helped you kind of see, wow, you could create this free time and and that it would be beneficial. I mean, Bill really aspired to that. And then the other thing I will say about friends that Warren taught us is, first of all, we got to meet his close circle of friends after that initial Hood Canal meeting. He invited us very quickly to go to this Graham Group meeting that he had up in Victoria, Canada, which we went to. And we got to see these incredibly um, high quality friends that he surrounded himself with. And I think that was really a lesson for us to pick your friends carefully, but to cherish them. And then the other thing I saw Warren do in the early years with us, and then I heard from his friend group, he did the same with them, is as he's reading something, he will send it out to you and share it with just a little note on the top. And it's a really great way that he's sharing what he's learning with you. He knows you'll care about it. And it's a way to keep his friends close who live all over the country. And it's a model we've ended up following too now that we have a broader you know, network of friends that aren't just in Seattle. It's, it's, he's taught us so many things. Well, we were lucky that Susie came along on a lot of these trips we did with Warren. Uh, you know, we got Warren over in uh, China, uh, and Susie was there, and we got Warren on this train trip all over the U.S., and uh, Susie came along on that. You know, he loved having her come uh, and be part of the thing. Some nights they would sing for us. Oh, uh, Warren likes to sing. Susie was a, a phenomenal uh, singer. And, you know, he always loved, loved the time he got with her. Yeah. There was just an incredible warmth between them that was palpable when you were with both of them in an easy way between them. And Susie loves people, loved people, and loved their stories. And she would, somebody you'd never met before, she would go out, she was so gregarious, and really get to know them, not at a superficial level, but deeply. And then it was great because Warren sort of relished that about Susie. And then he would often carry those stories with him in a shorter version. Um, but there was a warmth between them that was really beautiful to see. And a very, Susie had a very wide smile. And it came out in her singing, and it came out in how she treated other people. We didn't know Warren uh, in the early days. Um, he claims that he was completely uh, not good at socializing and dealing with people. <laughs> And, and yet, when you hear some of his humor and his naturalness at, at handling things, you know, I think he's a little bit exaggerating. But he definitely feels they grew up together. Uh, and that being aware of social causes, uh, mm. including some around race, a lot around women, that Susie was at the vanguard, and he completely loved that, agreed with her, supported her. Uh, a lot of the, the foundations he supported have carried on uh, that work one named after mm. her. Uh, so they they really developed the friends, uh, you know, figured mm. out how to do things together. So he he feels like he became um, good at at talking to people, being out in public with people because she was more natural at that. Well, I'm different from Warren in that what I like is equations and science and uh, you know, chemistry, physics, crazy software things. So it's a little different domain, 
Uh, but the rigor about, hey, do I really know what I'm talking about? Hey, there's this great book. Let's just keep reading more about this thing. Uh, and a fascination with the world. I mean, both of us, in the end, based on what we know, want to think, why did that happen? What's going to happen in the future? How could we shape that in a, a slightly better way? Uh, where are the, the best practices? And so we love talking about the world and, and what we expect. And he'll often have a different way of looking at things. He can explain uh, those things to me. Like, the you know, Europe's financial situation. It's been fascinating to hear how he thinks about that. We both love to work hard. Um, we both, uh, you know, get around the world, talk to interesting people. Uh, you know, neither of us uh, like frivolous things. Um, you know, he's not, you know, he doesn't know much about cooking or art or <laughs> a, a huge range of, of, uh, of things. Tell the early dice story, how you all connected over that. Well, that's just a mathematical problem where um, there's three dice and the idea is that you pick one and then he picks an, another one and then you roll against each other to see who's getting the highest rolls. And because you get to pick the first one, isn't that, you know, must not there be one of the three that is the best one to pick? Uh, well, I done a lot of math. So fairly quickly after I looked at them, I realized this is an unusual set of dice where uh, it's non-associative. That is, there's dice two is better than dice one and dice three is better than dice two. Anyway, so the second guy can always always win. Uh, anyway, it was just a kind of interesting problem. But Warren was so proud of himself. He had these dice tucked in his pocket. I remember his Breast pocket versus pants pocket, but he pulls his die S out, and we are walking outside of the main house at our Hood Canal property out at uh, out at this vacation house at Hood Canal, and he's got him, and he starts describing him. So he and Bill are walking, and I'm kind of watching this, and so he starts saying it, and then somehow you guys end up there's a car parked in front of the house, and they've got the dice on the hood of the car, I think, and they're going through it, and, and Warren is just beaming because Bill figured it out, and so you say it was just a math problem. Not everybody connects over just a math problem, <laughs> and. I want to add one thing about Susie, about the way I think that Susie helped Warren, which is I think we weren't there, but we heard the old stories of how she worked to really help him connect to the kids, which I think is a role that a lot of women play, but she, I think, was particularly thoughtful about it. But Warren's also very clear that Susie, behind the scenes, helped him think through who should be on the Berkshire board right around the time that they put Charlotte Guyman on, he eventually put Bill on the board and others, and that her counsel about what he needed on that board over the long haul, given what he was thinking the board's main role was, was really helpful. And the other thing I will say that he said to me along the way that was really sweet is I was being a bit tough on Bill at one point about some way I wanted him to change. And he said to me, he reached over, he said, Melinda, be patient. It took a long time for Susie to shape me. <laughs> and I was just really nice. <laughs> Warren's clearly older, <laughs> and um, and so and I think with time comes wisdom, and so I think Bill has held Warren out now for many years as his role model of who he would like to be, and so that's a really beautiful thing to watch, and um, I think they have very similar minds about focus, about thinking about big problems of the world, thinking about how you might solve them, who do you learn. So I think those pieces of their minds are incredibly similar. And I think what Bill is purposely learning from Warren and watching Warren is also how to bring the best out in people. Warren, uh, again, I didn't know him when he was younger, but he is really good now about complimenting people in a sincere way, saying what their best is, and I think that partly comes with wisdom and age, and Bill is learning, uh, learning how to do that, and Warren's role modeling it. Well, mostly he's a peer, but there are times uh, where he's a bit more like a father figure. Uh, when I was going through the antitrust trials and, you know, sort of that was uh, challenging for me, you know, his counsel, his thoughtfulness uh, uh, was, was more like a father figure. And I've learned way, way more from him than he's learned from me. But most things we're doing where we're, when we're chatting about the world or playing bridge, you know, we're two very equal friends, 
uh, who share their, their opinions. Warren's good at concentrating, and that's largely a virtue. Uh, you know, sometimes it can be a problem, but, you know, deep, deep expertise, uh, you know, doesn't just grow on trees, and Warren's got it. I think the other thing that you've learned from Warren, you had it, but you have really are refining it, is that um, Warren loves to teach. I mean, the reason he has all these business school kids come is he loves to teach. And Bill has always said, if you know something, you only know if you know something deeply if you can teach it to somebody else. And so I see Bill doing that a lot these days around the house, inside the foundation, not just saying this is how we should do something to a foundation team, but, but teaching them how he's thinking through it. And I think some of that actually role modeling of, comes from Warren. Well, Warren is, in a certain sense, the smartest person I know because I can't imagine how he does what he does. You know, I work with a lot of people in math and science who are mind-blowingly smart, uh, smarter than me in a lot of things, but at least, you know, it's in a dimension where I can understand, ah, if I'd studied that a little more, you know, I, I, I sort of get how they do it. Warren's ability to size up people and businesses, you know, say in the financial crisis where he knew to invest in Goldman and not in AIG, it's, it's a pretty magical thing. And I don't know anyone else who's like that at all. He is, he's pretty singular. He's one of the smartest people we know. And I think, but with his smarts also comes wisdom. And you don't always see those paired in people. And um, with his smarts, also comes humility, and so he'll make often make a self-deprecating joke because yeah. he's putting the other person at ease, right? And uh, boy, that humility and that humor that comes with it, that's quite unique. No, he's the best at that. He is the best at that <laughs> of anybody we, we know. We should all try to be 20% as, as good at that. Well, Warren had decided that uh, Susie would manage the, the giving away process. And uh, she had a board and was uh, doing some of that. And so it was a complete shock when Susie uh, got sick and, and, and died uh, before Warren. And so he had to come up with a new plan. And we were pretty stunned when he said at one point, hey, it'd be logical if some of this uh, would go to your foundation, and then a few weeks later he was saying, yeah, no, I, I think I might really do it. So it was completely out of the blue. Um, I mean, amazing, mm. uh, but not, not something that was part of the plan until that uh, tragedy. Not at all. And I think, and when we heard about it and then got some time to reflect on our own, actually twice, once on a walk, we were in the foothills in Colorado and another time in our neighborhood, which is we often walk to reflect or to talk about big issues, um, we both had tears because what it would mean for the world to have Warren's wealth given back to inequities, wow. And, and, and for us, this, this, we were so pleased for the world, but huge responsibility, right? I mean, we wanted to do it well, but it's really unbelievable. Well, Warren's going to have a legacy in so many mm. different uh, areas. I mean, for philanthropy in general, uh, you know, he really initiated the Giving Pledge, got us in, involved in that idea. That's going to drive a lot more philanthropy. The largest single gift, gift ever given was uh, what he gave away that day to our foundation and, and his children's foundations. And, you know, it's our job to make sure that uh, polio eradication, malaria eradication, uh, getting rid of health inequity uh, caused by all these infectious diseases that over the decades ahead that Warren's money allows that to happen. And, you know, we're on our way. Things are, are going well. Uh, you know, he checks in, but he really counts on us to be the hands-on uh, uh, managers. I think we have a shared belief uh, between ourselves and him that 
that all lives do have equal value, and that if you given the right tools and, and the right opportunity, people will lift themselves out of poverty. So whether that's a drought-resistant seed or whether that's a woman having access to a family planning tool or not having malaria, that they can go out and live the life that they want to live. And so that shared mission is a, is a really amazing thing that we have. And then I think, you know, he surprised us, you know, over six years ago when he had this big idea of, because we've been talking for a while about the right thing to do in the United States is not to have wealth handed down. We absolutely had that shared belief. But he came to us, you know, about six and a half years ago and said, hey, what if, what, what would it be like? Could we get other billionaires to give away their wealth, not even knowing how much? So that big idea eventually got announced, you know, five, five years ago from now um, as the Giving Pledge. But that was his initial idea, and it got refined over time. But wow, you want to talk about an additional legacy? Incredible.